All right, sounds good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is the Wise Guys. We are playing Cyberpunk Red, the complete core rules given to us by Artel Sorian before the release. And welcome, guys. Thank you so much for being a part of this. Today is a continuation of our last episode, which is actually a lost episode that we lost because of a power outage in my area. And it happened to be a giant, crazy battle the entire session. So <laughs> we lost a lot. But before we get into that, make sure you guys are joining the Discord community. The link will be in the description below where we talk about Cyberpunk, the tabletop game, and a bunch of like-minded people. It's an awesome community. Make sure you guys are following me on social media, as you can see on the screen, at John John the Wise on all social media, and YouTube as well. Unless you're already at YouTube, that's why you're here. And on top of that, make sure you guys are following our players, What the Fool on Twitch, DG Rage Riot on Twitch and YouTube, and Jimblesaurus Rex on Twitch as well. He's been playing some uh, Avengers as of late, the new Avengers game. And Joe yeah, is I just... Oh I'm yeah. Just I'm along for the ride. That's right. Joe's along for the ride. He's our resident cool guy. <laughs> and uh, He doesn't look at explosions. And what the fool also has a YouTube channel. That's correct. He uh, uploads his, uh, his clips from his channel, from his Twitch channel and stuff like that up there. Make sure you guys are following all of them. So as I said last episode, it was a lost episode. We lost everything and uh sam ectoplasm almost died i mean it was craziness so i'm gonna let the players say it in their own words to, to recap what happened in our last uh episode and they're going to be telling us their perspective from their character's perspective so why don't we start from barry ruth which it was his idea by the way so i gave 10 ip all around to everybody or sorry 20 ip yeah <laughs> yeah 20 ip <clears throat> so all right so you want to hear about what happened so we had just nicked that stupid corporal bot and ran around back with the atrocity right once we got back there adder instantly goes to working on the bot while sam goes over and gets those atrocity chambas all synthed up and starts rallying them up with some song about fork the fuck these corpo bitches or some shit like that anyways hub is over there watching the area in case anyone comes out and I'm there looking for ways to get into the building. See some windows up top, so me and Hug, Hub grab my grapple gun, shoot right up there. Him with his shredder and me with these two thumpers I picked up, right? Anyhow, some bait brains start shouting at me to drop my grapple gun down and let him come up too. I lean over Ray to tell this scat to shut down, and instead I just see Adder give me the thumbs up that he's got control of the bot. Send it down. <clears throat> Sam had done whipped up all these chumbas into a frenzy, and they rushed the door with a bot. I get back over to the skylight me and Hub had found, and he's pointing out a couple good spots to drop the thumpers. Now this place is crawling with corpo creep wannabe shields. So when we hear them opening up the door, it's like, fuck it. And I send one of the thumpers into the middle of the room, and the other I fling through an open door we see off to the side, fragging whatever was trying to hide in there. Shit gets real wild at this point. Gunfire everywhere down there. Hub up here popping heads. Hell, I even toss out a couple hatchets. And then this one big bastard pulls out a fucking rocket launcher, blasting a massive hole in the roof next, right next to me and Hub. Shit. After that, I ain't want to be up there no more, so I leap right down into the middle of the damn warehouse. Once I'm down there, I see this big-ass fuel tank, and I yell up to Hub about it. A quick look around, I see fucking Sam's crazy ass bleeding from like 82 bullet holes, laughing and telling these corporals what he's going to do to their mothers while running, around, running up and just placing his gun against a dude's head, and boom, no more dude. <clears throat> then I see we got one of these assholes trying to guard that room I fragged earlier. I run right pr uh, right past the prick, clipping him in the head with good old Betty here as I go. I get in the room, uh, hearing some massive explosion behind me, and see some chick floating in a tank all hooked up to wires like back in that other building. 
we got a couple splattered nerds on the ground and some more guards crying and trying to hold their guts in from the shrapnel. But shit, there's only one thing to do right now. So I just take old Betty here and crack that fish tank wide open. So wire lady washes right out laying on the ground like yesterday's catch. It was about here that Hub comes in and just starts double tapping corporal garbage right in the head saying no witnesses. All right, that, that was Barry's perspective of the fight. All right, how did Hub see that fight go down? Oh boy. This was supposed to be a simple recon mission. Find out what's going on, find the professor's people, and get them out. Unfortunately, the guards noticed us after Sam blasted a camera, so we had to take care of them. Got a neat robot out of the deal, at least. When we got around to the back, we found these gangers who called themselves the Austin Atrocity. Sam gets them all riled up and frothing at the mouth to go raid this corpo warehouse. Shows them the droid we nabbed as proof of the cool shit they can get their hands on inside. Barry gets his grapple gun, and he and I get up on the roof to take a look inside before uh, we run in guns blazing. Once we're up there, we see some pretty heavily armed mooks. Sam sends in the meat shield. Uh, yeah. And before Sam sends in the meat shields, I remind Barry that he's got a few nades. Perfect for a room full of nasties. Barry drops one in, blasts a couple of the guards right as the atrocity fellows knock down the door. They run in and start causing chaos and hitting people with pipes or whatever. I don't know what they're into. The fight's going well, and then a fucking rocket blows to the roof next to us. Barry and I see some borged out motherfucker who has a problem and a rocket launcher to fix it. We get a couple of AP rounds to him, and he goes uh, and he goes down like anybody else. Barry jumps down there and starts going to town on him up close and personal. He lets me know that these morons are standing next to a tank of explosive juice. Thanks. And runs into a side room. I blast a couple of shots to the roof to where he said the tank was, and that shit goes off and incinerates him. Sam is also shouting at me to come down and help him. I don't know who he thinks I am, but he's got plenty of blo uh, plenty of bodies to block shots without me taking hits. So I stay up on the roof while we clean up. After the fighting's over, I go down and check out the back room that Barry went to. Turns out one of the professor's folks has been turned into some kind of living computer like that last place. Barry's interrogating one of the eggheads in the back room. To, about how to get her out. I don't get it. Uh, sorry, I don't want any of these assholes to run their mouths to their bosses after seeing who they are, who we are. So I use my trusty pistol to pop a clean one in their dome pieces. Barry finishes his questions, and I finish the scientist, nice and clean. All right, Hub. Thank you for that awesome, awesome testament of what happened, Sam. What was your drug-induced story like? <laughs> There's a loud boom as Susan's roar echoes across the streets as one of the external cameras on the warehouse explodes. I look at the corporate goon who was telling me not to trash his stuff and go, What are you going to do now, pussy? After a few minutes of this chump guard and his dumbass robot stepping up to me and my boys getting and getting their asses kicked, and then him getting his ass kicked like a chump. The boys take the robot and we meet up with Austin Atrocity and the gangs associated to him. I hype these sick motherfuckers up to do some serious damage. Adder jacks in and Hub and Barry go up to the roof. And for a second I'm like, how's Barry going to cave people's heads in from a roof? And then two seconds later I hear two, ex two explosions and I was just thinking to myself, I just go, that's right, he's got the thumpers. Then Adder, I see Adder get the robot up and running and through the door, and our new boys stomp in, pump up to trash some shit that belongs to some rich jackasses. I power in, making sure that my mohawk skin and light tattoos are pumping to the music that only I can hear. I'm sure of it, that only I can hear of it. I see the Decker, that some nerd that thinks he can step to my boy Black Adder outside. And I immediately take some pot shots to distract the goons while Hub pops some sh pops some shots at these other doomed jackasses. Barry drops down like some sort of fucking psycho ninja and damn near caves some jackass suits check in chest in. And I laugh at this jackass who's about to get flatlined while we'll making my way to this asshole that's plugged in. And I'm going to ruin his life as painfully as possible. I see Barry zoom off to his side room and hear, hear the sweet sound of dudes getting their asses kicked. 
Hub slides down like a vid series commando and smokes some borged out jackass with a rocket launcher. Some other shoot some other suits with shiny chrome fingers kind of made my insides my new outsides. But these gangers and Hub came through stopping them from flatlining me. I watched Hub dead check all these dudes left pissing their pants like a stone cold badass. And after making sh and after this amazing assault, I know I'm gonna make the best fucking song ever out of this. You know, then I, I take a more take a few more hits of the good stuff to forget how I probably look like walking Swiss cheese right now. All right. <laughs> Sam Ectoplasm left on 2 HP. That is his <laughs> drug-induced story. Now let's move on to Black Adder, our, our resident net runner. How did it go for you? With my mind and body all stimmed out from that synth coke, we hit the scene, immediately roll up on some corporal scum. I will admit, the mechanic was hot, covered in grease, sweat, dirty as fuck. But as soon as I saw her trash can, I got real plump, real fast. New toys to play with? Perhaps, but I digress. They notice us immediately, and of course, as Sam pops one of the security cameras, we try to slip by, but no. These thugs think they're tough. The boys engage after some shenanigans from Sam. Did I mention I love this guy, by the way? The gonks guarding the gate are mere light work, but one gets away. He slips through the cracks. This leaves the trash can and the tech. At first, she doesn't want to let go, but freaks when Barry threatens to nuke her toys, and she bolts. We grab that bot and make our way to the back of the building. We turn the corner, and it's littered with the atrocity. They're everywhere. Thick as fuck in the area, and Sam gets to work immediately. Hair and tats in sync, he begins to rile them up. Did I say I love this guy already? Focus. B.A. Focus. I turn to the bot and get to work. This one was a bit tricky, but in the end, I hacked the fuck out of its ass, and it's ours to play with. I discreetly take another small bump of the synth coke, then look at the bag. Damn. I'm getting real fucking low. I need to re-up. As my juices start flowing again, things heat up quick. Barry and Hub are quick to the roof to scout things out on the inside, and Sam is still doing his thing all aglow, pumping up the atrocity. Everybody lines up in front of the door, but before they can break through, Adder's got a little surprise. I move the bot up to the front of the door, get ready to blast in. But before I do, I find my node. I make my move, I get close, jack in. Add a character. I wish I had a soundbite for this right now, but I don't. It's very unfortunate. <laughs> Exactly. I'm in. The architecture is bland, usual for corporal scum hackers, but as soon as I adjusted the adrenaline shift, I see some black ice. A fucking demon, of course. Looks like one of those beholders that the kids used to play back in dungeons and tombstones or something, or whatever the fuck game it was that they played. Anyway, flowing with digital imagery like you see when you jack in, but think Matrix Code. Then I focus on the demon, and this deckhead fizzles into my view. Who the fuck is this guy? I immediately let the boys know the breakdown of the net architecture, what I'm seeing inside, and what is happening. With this demon swiping at me, I get pissed and swing back. There's a bit of back and forth, and then I see the deckhead glitch out a little bit. I immediately think to myself, the boys are getting shit done. They're fucking up shit inside. Good. This will make my life easier if they jack him out. But even if they don't, I'm a straight brain burn this fuck. I turn to deal with the demon, and after a few rounds of that nonsense, the netrunner glitches hard and disappears. I think to myself, fuck yeah, boys. Now I can deal with the demon proper. All the while, I can hear shoes stinging and nades popping off inside, and I hear Sam cackling maniacally the whole ride through, amping up the atrocity who are pumped as fuck. Shit sends chills down my spine, but I love it. Now that the deckhead is gone, time to deal with the demon while the crew cleans up the corporal scum on the inside. All right. Very well done, guys. Thank you for that awesome, awesome story from each of you. And I will bring your attention back to the warehouse. We are at Ladybird Lake at a Biotechnica warehouse. And as the boys have said, 
them and the Austin Atrocity together have finally pinched this place. And now they're inside of this side room. And I'll focus your attention to this side room. And you can hear the labored breathing of Elena Covey as she lays on the cold warehouse floor. She was what Barry called yesterday's catch. The <laughs> one of the members of the of the nomad group from Dr. Creel's Tex Central Texas Preservation Society. She was one of the ones I was kidnapped and well, it looks like they did exactly what they wanted to do. The ground is wet with green sludge that seemingly was part of her stasis chamber. It doesn't take a doctor to know that she's dying. Her eyes keep darting to the control console that is now completely soaked with sludge. It seems she can only manage to move her eyes as she has no limbs and cannot move her torso. Can I get a perception check from Barry or Hub? Sure. Yeah, both of you can do it. Okay. She's definitely looking at the speaker button on the console. Okay. Right. Now before I'll you act on that. Well, before you act on that. Sure. No, that's fine. The only Biotechnica goon alive in the entire building is laying in the corner of the room in a puddle of his own blood. Can I get a... Uh, since Barry's pressing the button, let's get a conceal reveal from Hub. Okay, it's good enough. His ID badge is popping out of his jacket. You can kind of... You saw the reflection of the lighting inside as it reflected across the plastic of the ID badge. And right. his agent is laying on the ground. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I'll walk over and uh, just pluck that out of his pocket. Okay, so as you're walking over to pluck that out of his pocket, Barry's going to press the button. You also see his, his agent is laying on the ground next to him, stained with his blood. And on the screen, you see a flash of a, of a new message. It says, to all Austin execs. Galt operation is on hold, and then it looks like there's more information, but you'd have to open up the uh, the message. Now, let mm. me get a quick perception from you, uh, Hub. Okay. Oh, very well done. Very, very well done. You critically pass that one, and you can obviously see that this guy on the ground, as you guys are figuring all these things out... He's slowly pulling up his hand in a labored way, trying to be slick, and his finger, his cyber finger, the front tip of it folds over, and you can see a small barrel coming out of his finger as he's pointing at Elena Covey. Just whip up my pistol and blast him right in the eye. Can I, can I blast him in the arm so that it doesn't kill him but disables the arm? Yeah, sure. Or is that is that like... Is that like a chance kind of thing, or is that just like a... No, I'd like, say that you caught it so well with your roll that you're yeah. able to to get your pistol up and in position before he could even think about getting his hand in position. And you blast. The blast echoes through this chamber, and you fire into his cyber hand, and before he could even get a shot off, his hand is completely mangled. He doesn't scream in pain because he can't feel it, but he looks at his hand as... As it's completely gone on on one part of it, and I just, just go ahead. go ahead. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. And you can basically lift up his agent and put it in front of his face to unlock it. Um, um if you'd yeah, like, I'll do, that. I'll do that before he uh, before he passes away. So you're doing that. This guy is definitely bleeding out. And uh, the complete message now says warehouse compromised. Pick up Helix for relocation. New players in town are helping Creel. Identification in works. <clears throat> now right. I'm going to Barry. You turn on the speaker and you hear a tinny voice that is kind of distorted and... She, it's a woman's voice, and she says, "Hello." Hey, I'm. I can hear you. I, I, I'm Elena Covey. 
of the Central Texas Preservation Society. I'm alive. My consciousness is alive. And her eyes are wide open as she's looking at you, Barry. Yeah, we 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 heard that from that from, from that last guy I beat in the face because he wouldn't tell me how to get you out. Do you do you know how to get you out of here? Yes. And I'm still putting in that call to Adder. Get your ass in here. Yes, I put put me in your agent. You can download me into your agent. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Barry has no problems doing that. She gives you and, some uh, instructions on how to do it. And it's pretty simple. You just have to connect it and this and that. Oh. Uh, as uh as Adder is getting in, I'll uh I'll tell them that they've got people on the way and uh, they're trying to ID us. We're gonna wanna clear out all the uh all the video evidence that we were here. <laughs> I look over when I hear Hub say that, I look over at Hub. I, I think Sam's gonna clear out all the evidence that this building was over here. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'd walk in in the tail end when Hub's saying that, and I'll just be like, "Oh, you mean with this?" <laughs> well, you're you're bleeding profusely right now, Sam. You're you're very you injured. <laughs> he staggers in. Do you mean with this? Uh, no, they still might be able to recover something that way. Um, so I want to talk to, I, I want to talk to Tenny. Um, do we? Do, can your body be saved? No, I'm dying. Just download my consciousness. I don't know well, what's yeah. going to happen to me after my body dies, but at least you'll have an imprint of my last knowledge and 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 intelligence. Yeah, I'm gonna download her into my agent, and now my agent is named Tenny. Uh, I'm her name is Elena. Elena? Yeah. Oh, Wait, yeah, you said her. You could call her Tinny if you want. Before he does that, I want to ask him, oh, Barry, you sure you got enough space on that thing? I'm already doing it. <laughs> too, too late. <laughs> like, he, you know, he, he, the second she said download her, he started downloading her by following her instructions. Through the speaker, she says, you can split my files throughout all your agents and your cyber deck. And I can be omnipotent throughout all of your technology. I'm going to hold off on that. That sounds like hey. a bit too much uh, commitment. Hey, Elena, you know a lot about this building, right? I know everything there is to know about this building and all the buildings in Austin, Texas, and I can learn more. That's awesome. Do they have any good weapons or any credit stashed here or anything useful in here other Ab than you? Absolutely. The various boxes that you see within this warehouse are bio-locked. I have the bio-lock pin numbers. We can easily open them and take out their contents. Then I'm gonna look over at um, over at Sam. Hey, before that though, do they have any uh, medical supplies? Like, like I don't know some, I, like like a band aid or something. Shit, this man needs something. As you're saying that, one of the members of the Austin Atrocity, they kind of were are tailing Sam, and you overhear them saying shit like, "Fuck, did you see what he did? Look at this guy, he's a badass." And this woman, who looks like she's the leader, she says, uh, Sam, is it right? You know it. I'm sorry. You <coughs> know it. Listen, uh, I got this. And she pulls out a EpiPen, and it on the EpiPen is a label, and the label says, good shit. <laughs> Sam just kind of goes... Kind of pulls the the cuff of his jacket down, the collar of his jacket down. He's like, "Hit me with it." She says, "Here you go. Hope you could take it." She hits you on the neck with it. Let me get a resist torture drugs from you. Nice. Oh, very well done. For that, I will give you the max, which is uh, your body stat plus a d6, so six. So uh, your body plus six is how much this. This heals you. It looks like uh, as she presses down on this EpiPen, a silver liquid goes into your bloodstream. And what 
you don't know and what nobody here knows uh, you don't have to roll for it since you crit you critically succeeded oh. i'm going to give you the max oh. so body plus six, right? your body plus six is how much you heal and this goes straight into your bloodstream and these are healing nanites where did she get it how does she have it i don't know but it is good shit Now, before all this has happened, once you finished your net run, Black Adder, you found two very important files in this net architecture. One was a Biotechnica systems manual that gives you plus one to all interface rules in a Biotechnica system. So as long as it's a Biotechnica system, you get a plus one to everything. While you're inside damage, uh, interface rules, control, anything. The second file that you found were uh, was a folder. It was inventory of the warehouse including weapons, medical equipment, and more evidence of the gatekeeper protocol and what Biotechnica is doing. And this is damning evidence. It's paperwork linking the Austin Police Department's forensic examiner to the gatekeeper protocol. And he's the main researcher. The problem is the name is coded. It keeps coming up as Helix. And this is the same name that you guys saw in the text message on uh, yeah. on the Corpo's uh, agent. He's listed on various papers. And if I can get a perception fifth, uh, perception or cryptography from either of you, from uh, from Black Adder, I mean. And if you don't, if you can't pass this, Dr. Creel can help you. Oh, perfect. You have cryptography. So you decode a section that lists the address uh, called, it says emergency contact, the Driscoll. And you put in the, Dr the Driscoll into the city net. It's a hotel in downtown Austin near the Civic Center, or Civic District, exactly at 604 Brazos Street. And looking further into that, you know it's a 10 minute drive from where you guys are. What was that? Six zero four Brazzers. Bra Brazos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we know what you've been doing during quarantine. Hey, this is actually its real address, the real place, and it is actually ten minutes from where we are. I looked all this stuff up, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Just be careful of any black couches you see there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you. You have been healed with uh, your body stat plus six for Sam Ectoplasm Blackadder. You have all that information. And on top of that, let me get you to roll one, two, three, four. Uh, sorry, give me four, five, six. All right, let me get you to roll six D10. Six D10? Yeah. And this is just... Uh, Odds and odds and evens, all right? You want odds. Okay, the Speedy Gonzalez program is broken. The sword's broken. Uh, okay, so on the Netrunner that you guys defeated, his name is Splice. That was the name that he took in the net. And his cyber deck is all messed up, but there's a few programs on it that are still working. And the cyber deck could be repaired. On the cyber deck, it says the blade in the dark. That's what he called it. It's like this, uh, it's this thing that connects to his wrist and comes out like a blade, a curved blade over his arm. And that was his cyber deck. And net runners taking other net runners that they've, de that they've killed or defeated, taking their cyber deck is like the ultimate, uh, bragging rights. So his Speedy Gonzalez program destroyed. His sword program destroyed. His Vriz bolt is actually still salvageable. I'm gonna put that in the chat. I'm so glad this guy's dead. I just hate <laughs> his name. I hate his name. I hate the name for his cyberdeck. I just hate. He looked like a ninja. I fucking hated this guy. I yeah. hate this guy so much. Yeah. I'm so glad he's dead. His Asp Black Eyes program is destroyed, but his Scorpion is in good condition it's a it's a black eyes program i'm putting that in chat as well and his it looks like his range upgrade was also destroyed 
So this is a seven slot cyber deck if you choose to use it or repair it because it does need to be repaired. And those are the pro those are the two programs you can salvage off of him. All right, I already got a seven slot. I just want to salvage the programs. I'm gonna keep his cyber deck as a keepsake, of course. But now, on top of all that, from the information that you've gotten from the two files, it looks like the only things that are of value in this entire warehouse is a crate that has a Malorian Arms frag cannon, which is a something that. Sam Ectoplasm might want to take a look at. And in that same box is a Kendachi Power Fist. In a separate box is a Med Scanner. And another separate box in this warehouse is a Cyberdyne M7A3. Alright, so why don't I get some uh some checks from you guys or you can ask the austin atrocity to go locate those boxes for you guys while you figure out what the hell's going on in this room i'm going to use elena to tell us where those boxes are and then direct the atrocities to go get them okay you do just that elena tells you exactly where they were located and where they were logged since they are electronic electronically locked everything is in the system so the, even their current location is in the system. She tells you exactly where they are. And the atrocity are just standing in the doorway, kind of making sure that Sam's okay. Sam. When they start when they start saying where all the stuff's at, I look at the atrocity guys and I go, let's go get some loot, boys. You and of course I'm going to get her to tell us any other like any other random stuff they have in here mostly so I can give the random shit to the atrocity so they ain't so pissed off when we walk off with these two crates yeah she she gives you exactly an inventory of how many boxes are still intact because remember there was a giant explosion that destroyed a bunch of boxes so she gives them information on what boxes are there? There's ammunition, explosives, weaponry, medical supplies, food, water, all kinds of stuff in this warehouse. Do we want to get the doc in here? Uh, no. Maybe there's say some... maybe say his final farewells to Elena. Uh, I think no, no, like we're taking Elena to the doc. <laughs> okay. Well, we we wanna we wanna get the fuck out of here because, like I said, they've got people on the way, so we wanna grab what we can. Get the fuck out and make sure we erase all the the files on the uh, on the building systems. Make sure they don't have any way to trace it back to us. Yeah, why don't erase, I why don't I get and a then cloak? Erase the building. And then erase the building. Good idea. And then erase the building. Ooh, I like that idea. Well, uh, let me get a cloak check from you, uh, Black Adder. Um, before you do that, Adder. Uh, Barry's like, Alina, you, you know this building and its systems very well, right? I know it, yes. Uh, Adder, do you want to download her onto your deck as well? She might be able to help you clo uh, shred their system easier. That's why I alluded to you having enough space, Barry. Oh, uh, well, I was already subtle. doing it. <laughs> okay. I'll, uh, I'll I'll put her on to his... Uh, well, he'll put her onto his deck as well. <laughs> yeah. So basically, Blackadder, what happens is you get Elena Covey into your cyber deck and you permanently have a demon in your system. Oh. And she is the demon. She's my demon. She can speak to you through your agent, through your comms, whatever you connect to. She can 24-7. She's an artificial intelligence that used to be a human being in your system. No. I think Catter found the love of his life. How much of a of of her humanity is left is left to interpretation. Is she even human anymore? And as you guys look, she's passed away. Her body is dead. All right. So we immediately want to run a system diagnostic to make sure that I can communicate with her, that she's been disconnected from her body completely. There's no ties left to this physical place. She says, this is strange. What do you think? I 
Am I thinking? What what does it mean to think? Am I human? All good questions that will be answered yeah. in time. What are you doing, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> I you fuck. I'm alive, but I'm not. I can see through your your Cyberdex camera and your agent's camera that my body has deposed, but I still have most of my memories. Good, we're gonna need them. Don't worry, we're gonna get these, the guys who did this to you. Don't worry You're about your consciousness us. for now. All of it will be answered in time. I need you to focus on this place. Uh, yes, focusing on one task at a time is more efficient. All right, let's clean house, boys. Make sure the atrocity gets what you need out of those boxes because I am about to wipe the whole place. Yep, we uh, grab all the uh, all the physical goodies while he's getting all the digital stuff. And uh, try and... I guess we can move it around back and then, like, quickly move it up into the car around the, uh, the backside so that... Uh, it's not obvious that we're just like carrying a bunch of stuff out the front of the uh, the warehouse. So the right, atrocity, guys. the ah. atrocity, bring you guys the boxes that you were looking for, and Sweet. Elena just relays the pin pad number for each box. You, as you guys read out the box, you're like uh, fifteen eleven. She goes thirty eight thirty eight, and you open that box. Uh, Sam, when you open that box, what you find inside. Looks like a grenade launcher with a six shot magazine and next to it are three frag grenade rounds and only three frag grenade rounds with it. The only problem is this grenade launcher is what seems to be bio locked. So it doesn't have a, 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 an owner yet so it needs to be unlocked. Which Blackadder can take care of, or you can do with a tech scanner, you can do an electronic security check. I will 100% have fucking Adder do this. We're just going to put the, we're going to put the box for this in the fucking car, because he's focused on, he's focused on nuking this entire uh, network infrastructure. It's where no one can trace anything from us, and they can't recover anything. Yep. Now, as they're all doing this right now, is there a node close by, or is the only one down below to the south? It's uh, That's the only one that was down here on the south. Oh, I figured where she was connected into was going to be a node. She's already in the system, and uh, it uh, you don't have to be in a node, actually. Uh -huh. So you can just relay with her. Until you guys leave this building, she's still connected to yeah. the console. Sick. Yeah. So when I, see the, when I see the grenade launcher, I just... I hand my submachine gun <laughs> to the to the closest guy, and I'm, I'm the closest one of these riff riots. I'm like, you can have this, man. <laughs> Sometimes it's you won't be able to carry that. Uh, the guy that you handed it to is like in disbelief, and he's just holding on to it. Very awesome. Like, All right, I got my I got a pistol. I, Relax. So I can Relax, have it. Barry. So I can have yeah, it. Yeah, dude, it's it's all you, brother. Holy shit. <laughs> He's holding on to it, and he goes, Sam Ectoplasm's SMG. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> and another box is brought open. You read the number out. Elena gives you the pin pad. You boop, boop, boop. You open it up. And inside is this metallic glove that looks like a giant silver fist. And it, it has articulating fingers and everything. And on, on top of it engraved, it says Kandachi PF. And this oh, is a... This, says this, <laughs> this is a power fist made by Kandachi. And it's considered a heavy melee weapon. And it has a really cool thing called locking joints. And I think we all remember what that was like. Oh, oh weird. They just... Uh, they just bottled a hand after Richter's hand. It's either that or they just cut your hand off, bro. Uh, well, see, that can't happen because 
whoever delivered this to the warehouse, I assume, did it while they were alive. <laughs> this is also bio-locked, but a grappled user must make a DV-23 brawling check to free themselves of the grapple once the joints are locked. Or an EMP or a called shot to the fist will loosen the power fist grip. Hmm. Okay. Jesus Christ, 6d6? <laughs> Yeah, that's what the grapple damage was for. Uh, no, I'm I'm looking at the grenade launcher. Mal Malorian arms frag cannon right. is a grenade launcher, and it's six d six. Yeah, that's what frag grenades do. Yeah, grenades are mean. That's yeah. why I use them a lot. <laughs> In the same box as the power fist, you find a med scanner. The med scanner, uh, scanner with external probes and contacts, diagnosis, injury, and illness assisting user in medical emergencies not requiring surgery much like what's going on with uh, sam ectoplasm right now and user adds plus two to their first aid and paramedic skills using the med scanner who's got first aid not me don't know and the final box of importance was the cyberdyne m7a3 and as you guys open up this box it is in three different pieces. It looks like a rifle, and it has a giant scope in there as well. And when you put it together, what you find is it is a sniper rifle of sorts with a five-round magazine capacity. And it does happen to be loaded and bio-locked. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So this is this is what you find on top of all kinds of other stuff. There's uh, very heavy pistols, light pistols, SMGs, no assault rifles, no heavy SMGs. But there's any other. Go ahead. Any other type of grenades or anything found? Not no nothing. No other explosives here. Okay. Shit! I'll take a very heavy pistol. Sure. And they can um, find you the box, and they can get it for you. And there's ammunition, enough ammunition for you guys to carry. Sweet. Yeah, that I, I don't care about any of that. Um, <laughs> so while, while the while the trusty is doing all that and everything like that, uh, Barry is actually going to be looking for some type of cloth or something that I can wrap her body up in. Because I figure her nomad tra tribe will, her her clan will want to put the body to rest. Well, there just happens to be the a blood soaked jacket of a corpo in the corner, and it is a tr it's a trench coat long enough that you can put her corpse into it. Yeah. All right. Oh yeah, did that guy bleed out that uh that I stopped him from shooting? Uh yeah, it doesn't look like he's alive anymore. Sweet. So that guy's right. also dead. Cool. We're just gonna. I'm gonna get her body, I guess, and I'm assuming the atrocities are pulling everything out of here. And it's like, hey, Sam, you you want to set that thing to blow, and you might want to tell the atrocities to get shit far away from here. Um. I mean, do we want to destroy this warehouse, or do we want to use it? Yeah. Like, is there there's not a bigger target we're coming at? And I was like, I'm gonna look at the atrocity and be like, all right, boys, get your stuff, get as far away from here as possible because this building is about to get real hot. Well, the female leader looks at you and she says, "Listen, Sam, the name is Sharpie. I'm the leader of this group, the Atrocity." And after what you pulled today, man, you're one cool cat. And if you ever want to be a part of the atrocity, you got a seat at the table. Shit, that's what I'm talking about. Unless anybody Invite. here Invite. thinks he doesn't deserve it and everybody around is like shaking their head. No, no, he's the man. He's the Invite. fucking man. She says... She says, if, if if there's somewhere you guys need to lay low, 404 East 6th Street, the Jackalope, that's where we hang out. See you there, Sharpie. 
She says, park in front. We'll meet you there. Mm. As I'm trying to save the note, thank you. Mm hmm. And uh, Barry, or Hub, did you ever look at your phone at any point? Uh, I didn't see that I got any messages on my phone. Well, you just looked now, and it looks like there was 20 missed calls from oh, from Doctor okay. from Doctor Creel. All right, so I'll um, respond real quick, and I'll uh, tell him, yeah, sorry, we were in a bit of a firefight down here. We're getting ready to uh... hub. God damn it! You finally picked up. Holy shit! Everyone in a 20 block radius heard that explosion. What the fuck is going on over there? I was I was just texting him. Yeah, he he's <laughs> he's calling. I thought uh oh. or either way, that's his response in the text message. Yeah, yeah be like I'll tell him, yeah. We were in a firefight, we're getting the fuck out, we cleared out any uh any evidence that we were there. And um What was uh, her name? Elaine? Elena. Elena? I'll say um Elena was uh being used as one of those uh, human computer things we got a lot of info on who's doing it and uh, I guess we got her consciousness downloaded into some kind of software or something got her out of there but uh, her body didn't make it he just uh, is this on the phone or text message I'll just uh, I'll, I'll be talking to him on the phone with this one I guess I'll, I'll do it while we drive yeah, okay, and uh, he was actually in the car. Yeah, he's in the car, White. Yeah. Okay. So you guys exit the warehouse. This is what's going on. Yeah, and then we get into the car and tell him what's up, I guess. Okay, so you guys get in the car, and and he's frantic. He's panicking. He he's. You can see that aligned across the street, out of all the various like businesses and... And people just on the street, they're all standing there looking at this warehouse that's kind of on fire. It's smoking. There's rubble and and, and the uh, aftermath of an explosion. And if you take um, a look inside, you can see dead bodies. Yeah, and I, I so, definitely didn't park my car right in front of the warehouse. No, you didn't. Way. No, you didn't. Well, also, John, <laughs> real quick, you said that uh, on the outside, on the docks, there was like... There, there was like some boats and shit, right? When yeah. When we first came, yeah. I figure we just load everything up into the boats and yeah, take, take off in, the... and take off in them, and then we have the atrocities drop us off a ways up the way, and after the big boom happens, and we make our way back around to the car. All right. Because I don't think there's any way Sam's leaving here without explodifying this place. Yeah. Uh, let me take a look at the map so I can get a better idea. So you guys are down here at Ladybird Lake. So you could take a boat and where we need to go is here. Let's do directions. So you have two locations where uh, you guys, well, you can get, you guys can go anywhere, but you know that you need to go to the Driscoll to intercept Helix, which is the forensic examiner, before Biotechnica gets there. And also you can go to the Jackalope. And if you guys actually go to Google Maps, <laughs> you can type in the Jackalope. So you guys would be able to take a boat down the southern tip. Let me uh, screenshot this for you. Well, I don't think we're going to leave Hub's car. No, no, no. You would, yeah. That's the other thing. You would have to leave uh, his car if that's. The no, case. we're just we're we're just getting a drop off away from this building. So you know, everybody's staring at the building. We don't want to come walking around from the back of it. Yeah, I totally get that. You could easily drive the vehicle to towards like the side of the building and go around the left side and kind of like drive on the beach. It, there's no road there. But you'd be able to drive on the sand. I think I think the the best option is load the stuff into the boat, take the boat down like, the river a bit, and then meet them farther down the road, and then load the stuff into the car. Yeah, because uh, your car's not at the warehouse. You could tell Doctor Creel to go somewhere else with the car. So but, I sent you guys uh, an image. 
So you guys are at Ladybird Lake. The jackalope is right next to the Driscoll. Like it's it's about a few blocks away. And uh, you guys can opt to just go straight to the Driscoll, or go to the jackalope to, you know, maybe reconvene. Well, I'm going back to my car because the professor's not driving my car. That's fair. <laughs> So yeah, I'll I'll meet these guys at the uh, at up. the dressing room. Split up. Well, we're gonna go to Jackalope first, right? Or yeah, I'll, I'll meet them at the Jackalope. Cause uh, before we get in another fight, Sam kind of needs some. Sam needs some medical work. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I'll uh, I'll meet you guys at the Jackalope. I'll go get the car, or actually, probably need to meet you down uh, down the road away so we can load the stuff from the boat into the car. Yeah, so yeah. We're just driving the boat up the river away from the warehouse, yeah. and then we're gonna beach that bitch and get our shit out of it and and sink that motherfucker and leave. Yeah. Why don't I get a D10 plus four because that is your reputation with the Austin atrocity, and we're gonna okay. see if they can lend you some of their boats, whether they're in working order. Yeah, no left. Okay, eleven. We can get it from all of you. And pick the best what was one. It again? Okay. Sorry. Uh, D10 plus four, because your reputation with the atrocities of four. Do we want to add our cool to it or not? Um, I mean, you can, but it doesn't matter. The DV in my head is taken into account that it's only, you know, you're only like, using those. Do what? Does Sam get any other bonuses with these guys? Sam, uh, yeah, I'll give you a plus two. All right, nice, nice. Okay. All right, so they do have a boat actually on the southern tip. Uh, this guy right here, it's a giant, it's a pretty big boat too. All right. And Sharpie tells you Dog will take you around. Their name is Dog. And this is a non-binary person that is part of the atrocity. And all you can see is their eyes as they have a, uh, a mask covering from the nose down and a beanie from the eyebrows up and they are the tracker of the Austin atro atrocity if there's somebody that needs to be found dog will find them <laughs> and dog actually has a boat for you would you say he's a bounty hunter <laughs> they don't uh, say much but <laughs> if there's somebody that needs to be found dog is definitely the bounty hunter <laughs> <laughs> So you guys would make yourselves down onto the boat and make your way around and probably get in from Towers of Town Lake, looks like, which is right here on East Avenue. And Dr. Creel and Hub can take Holly Street all the way down and meet you guys pretty much right there at Towers of Town Lake. Well, I'm, also, I'm, also meet reminding, <laughs> I'm also reminding Sharpie to get people away from this warehouse. And she looks around and she sees them all looting and taking things out, putting them in vehicles. And, and now you're seeing other people starting to come forward, coming to the warehouse. And she says, uh, she says, what, what do you have in mind, Sam? Then he shows her the box and opens it. And she looks at it and she, she determines that, holy shit. Yeah, we definitely need to get the fuck out of here if you're going to set that thing off. Yeah. Sam's going to say it out loud to all these other people that are coming in the warehouse. And it's like, you guys can feel free to loot as much as you want. But in about, what's the timer set for? Whatever you want it to be set for. We don't have a whole lot of time before some people show up to fuck with this place. And the police are definitely on their way. So <laughs> you guys... So what I'm doing is, minutes. you guys can loot it as much as you want, but in about three minutes, this building's going to be gone. Oh, shit. The That's what Sharpie says, and she goes, Atrocity, roll out. Get your shit together. Let, let the civvies get at it. We're done here. Well, I was yelling it to everybody in the warehouse. Yeah, and she took that as a note that their looting time is over and they need to get the fuck out of there because they're not going to take any more chances. They've got enough stuff. 
all the other people that want to take chances looting in here, that's up to them. So you're seeing people starting to run in and they're taking shit off of dead bodies and opening, trying to open crates. They're banging things onto the crates, trying to open them. This is the time of the red and there's all kinds of technology and stuff in here that they can sell. So this has become, uh, it's gone from a spectacle to a supermarket sweep of scavenging. Well, yeah, but what I'm saying, like when Sam, Sam hits that and it's three minutes, he goes... You guys need to hurry up and get the fuck out, and then presses the button on the detonator, and then just fucking slides the thing somewhere where no one can tamper with it. Set like a timer he, for three minutes. He takes one of the crates, lifts it up, closes it, puts, and then he puts the bomb in there, and then closes it. Like, no, he puts the bomb in there and leaves it open. Because I don't know if these things are blast proof or not. Alright, the counter is going down and you're seeing people scrambling inside, picking up any kind of technology you can. They can. Uh, some of these service robots are flashing ar electrical arcs, electrocuting people. And, and there's no sympathy, there's no empathy here. People are just out to survive. And it's kind of a disturbing scene where they're just like pulling things off of bodies and, and off of shelves and, and off of each other. I run out and jump in my car so I'm getting the fuck yeah, out of here. We did, as soon as I say that and drop that bomb, we're gone. Okay, Dog expertly is able to pull out with the boat. And Black Adder, you are are who's with who's with Dog and who's with uh I'll go in the boat. Okay, you're in the boat. Barry Ruth. I'm carrying a body, so I'm definitely in the boat. Okay. All right, so just me and the uh, me and Professor in the car. Yeah, you... them the uh, jackalope. Okay, you guys uh, drive over. Let me get a drive check from you, Hub. All right. And just don't roll a one. <laughs> Give me a ten percent chance to wreck every time I drive anywhere is rough. Well, you know, you might take a wrong turn, and there could be a police. Uh, checkpoint but there wasn't because you rolled a 21 so you're able to take the side streets you took holly all the way down but then you also made a left on uh chalmers driving down haskell because you saw some uh red and blue lights hitting the corners of the of the street signs and and you triangulated that and as you're doing this driving trying to figure out exactly where to go dr creel is just yapping and yapping. What, what do you mean AI? What AI? How did they do that? How could they even do that? What happened to Elena and her body? Can we bury her? We also got all those file, AI files that um, that Black Adder found, right? Exactly. And Elena was able to expertly cloak because she knows the system. So she was able to hide everything, delete everything. There's nothing left. Sweet. Yeah, I just tell them... Uh... Look, I don't know much about all this. You gotta ask Adder when we get there. I know that uh, I know that Barry's got her body, so you guys can put her to rest and all that. But uh, I don't know anything about the AI stuff. Okay, so you guys uh, are able to drive. You meet up with everybody at the southern tip of Lake Ladybird, um, where. All right. Three minutes is up. Three, two, one. Boom! You hear a giant explosion that shatters windows a few blocks down and reverberates throughout the entire city. I mean, everybody heard it. And you look up into the sky and you see a giant mushroom cloud where you're assuming your explosive device went off. So, looking at that explosion... Was that exactly where we said it? Or that was, was that exactly where you said it? Okay. And it is exactly where the bomb went off. Car alarms are going off all over the place. I mean, it was the loudest noise anybody heard. Everybody just stopped what they're doing. As you guys are casually just <laughs> driving your car to the <laughs> jackalope. Everybody's like stopping, getting out of their car there's like windows shattered and stuff like that all over the place there's glass on the street oh man it sucks to be them with their non bulletproof glass and non armored cars Rough. and as that's happening you guys are seeing police drones flying avs flying into that area police cars just like zo zooming past you guys 
to go to that area to investigate what the hell's happening. If we are still on the boat, like the other team and stuff, when the explosion happens, you just see Sam. He's just like... <laughs> you do that, Sam, and you feel a little tinge of pain as your bullet holes are still healing. And you guys can largely make it to the jackalope without any incident. Because the cops are a little bit busy dealing with a giant explosion. Yep. Alright, so there's parking in front on Trinity Street, Neches Street, and uh, there's three giant lots on 7th Street, which is behind the Jackalope. So would you just like to park in front, or... Uh... Sharpie told us to park right in front. Yep. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah but this is Hub. He's not parking in front anywhere. I, I could park in front here because, like, us being at a bar is... Well, actually, hold on. Is this, like, well known to be like the atrocities hang out uh let me get a streetwise okay uh give me one second let me just change up the music oh, no oh my <laughs> god sam you have no idea if this is the atrocities spot if this is a cop hangout or where biotechnica hangs out you just forgot where they told you to go. You're yeah. looking at the wrong place. Yeah, you're looking at the wrong area. And uh, Hub, it's obvious that this is a Austin Atrocity hangout. Because right. you walk into the bar and you're immediately greeted by a giant plastic jackrabbit. With giant... Oh, oh sorry. Uh, sorry. If, if it's like well known that this is an atrocity place and... I'm guessing that people know that the atrocity were hanging around the place that just blew up. I'm gonna go around to the back. <laughs> the there is no like back entrance. There's only the it's front like entrance. No, no, he's parking oh, in the car. back. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. There's three giant parking lots. Um, in the back on pretty much the other street that's parallel to the front street, the sixth street, so seventh street. So okay. if you go around, there's three giant parking lots. They're automated. You just park there and you pay a fee. It's a uh, ten eddies for four hours. All right. Okay. Give them twenty. Uh, actually, now can I can I do the uh, the the ten and then have it like automatically do whatever we have to do that? Yeah, it'll do that. It's connected to your cred stick. Gotcha. So right. it'll automatically take, uh, it says eight hours max, though. All right. Okay. And, um, that's more than enough time because in less than eight hours, the, uh, the Galt site will be, will, will happen. Well, it was supposed to happen. It's put on hold for right now. Right. So do you guys now walk into the bar together or how's everybody working out here? Yeah, well, we so, yeah, when they go to, like, when we get to the front door of the, the, the jack, you said jackalope, right? Yep. We get to the front door of the jackalope, you know, Sam's got his lights all flashing and his mohawk up, and he just, he, like, kicks open the front door, and then steps in and just goes, What's up, bitches? And... As you do that, but also we have Elena Covey's body to worry about. Do you decide to let Dr. Creel just take on responsibility for her body? I mean, it's his person. I brought her body for him. I mean, he's probably also going to want to like talk to the AI version of her and stuff. And I don't think it's very... Uh... What do you, I don't think the health department would like bringing a corpse into I mean, an establishment. Listen, yeah. Hub had a spot in the back of his trunk that the body can sit in. Yeah, it's in one of your smuggling things, right? And just, but Doctor Creel's just gonna shake his head like this isn't right. I don't know what you guys are saying about her consciousness, but I don't think that's her. Elena's dead. Yeah. Huh? What do you do? You, do you want to be able to bury the body, or do you just want us to get rid of it? I must. I, I have to take her body to my house. Oh shit! My house is in pieces. <sighs> Fuck. I, I, I'll take her to the university or something. Right. Wait. You need a ride over there. No. I don't know I'll, if you want to I'll be call somebody. A body into 
a, into a cab. I'll call somebody. We still have some of them. The members of our family are out there in Austin. All right. He uh, just walks away. He says, uh, "Just keep the trunk open. I'll I'll transport her body, and then we'll close the trunk. Take your keys with you." Fucking right. I'm taking my keys with. <laughs> he says, uh, "I think I'm just gonna go to the Galt site, and hopefully, help them with their fortifications." And we're leaving everything in your hands, Hub. You and your friends here. I'll wait with you until your friends get here to pick you and Elena's body up. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The rest of you can go on. I'm going to wait with the doctor. All right. All right. Yeah. Before before we head in and enter as well, I want to talk to Creel about the consciousness and ask him if he wants to see her he says he was, uh, he was pretty adamant that he didn't think that was her anymore he says just, what does it mean to see her what what will i see you you will see her representation in the net her consciousness is there she can see you right now through my cyber deck as i'm as i'm just kind of like holding it looking at him pointing the camera to him she can see you she can talk to you she says she has all of her memories so if there's something you need from her or something you need to tell her she's not going anywhere and i tap my cyber deck she's safe here you do have a speaker on your cyber deck and it can just go through that vox channel and you just have to turn it on it's up to him it's like you want it, it, this is your last opportunity and Elena's begging you to turn on the speaker, by the way. Uh, she, and I tell I tell him that, too. I'm like, she's begging to talk to you right now. Just you turn it decide. on, man. Just turn it on. Just turn it on. Oh. Right. Just flip the, flip the switch on. Adjust. Come a little crackly sounds coming in and out. And finally. <laughs> Dr. Creel, it's me, Elena. I'm telling you, I'm alive somehow, some way. Elena. Oh, God. What happened to you? Do you feel pain? Do you f what do you feel? It's it's hard to explain what I feel, Dr. Creel. But just know that I'll do whatever I can to protect our family. There's bad things coming for us. And I have to help our family in whatever way I can and make sure my death was not in vain. And he's moved to tears. He doesn't know what to say and he just uh, he just mouths turn it off. Turn it off. I'm turn it off and uh he says i i don't know how to say it but take care of her some way i don't know what that means but but take care of her he says that to you black adder i'm sorry repeat that but, hey uh i'm going to pick up my uh my uh freaking agent like i'm talking to it on the phone talking to someone on it like a phone and like uh can't, can't we just put you in his agent can you guys hear me all right yeah yeah we can hear you yeah uh you she are all broken for me oh really oh, fuck yeah hold on Is your internet starting to get laggy i think i mean it might fix itself Oop. Oop. yeah we lost them. oh yeah barry's talking to the line on his agent can can we just put you in his agent? Am I missing something? He doesn't want me to be in his agent. His his memory of me is someone in flesh and blood that he talked to and he looked at for many years. I don't think he can accept my consciousness in his phone. That's weird. Okay. Let him right, check, let check. him grieve. Yeah, we can hear you. Roger. <laughs> right, good, 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 good. Let him grieve. We have work to do, gentlemen. Hub thinks right, this is weird as shit. It definitely is. Barry uh, agrees, but Elena agrees too, or whatever, <laughs> whatever she is. Hub, Hub thinks is. this quietly to himself. He doesn't say it's weird as shit out loud. No, you don't have to. We're all thinking quietly to ourselves that this is weird as shit. Yeah. Yeah. Except all, maybe Black Adder, who's thinking this. All the while, all, the while, cool all, all the while, you guys are looking at each other like, "What the fuck is going on?" I'm just fucking smiling. <laughs> See, you guys all put this fucking like person's brain into your phones. Hub's like, "Nah." Sam didn't do that shit. 
Oh yeah, you're right. Sam wasn't even in the room. He was like, oh, grenade launcher. Yeah. yeah. So far, she's on his own Adder Cyber deck and uh, Barry's agent. Yep. Because, you know, if this it. lady starts talking to me through my phone, Sam's going to, like, take his bag of Coke and just... <laughs> <laughs> this, shit, this shit's this cut a... with something bad. This is uh, bad shit. <laughs> I'll, uh, batch, boys. I'll uh, this. Well, yeah, no, as no. you guys are kind of having this weird kumbaya, a uh, vehicle pulls up, and it is clearly part of the Central Texas Preservation Society. And it looks like Dr. Creel's ride is here. The side of the van door opens, and there's four armed individuals inside, fully cybered out. I mean, they, they're not as mean-looking as you guys or the Austin Atrocity. In fact, some of them look like they can't even figure out how the right end of the weapons that they're holding but they load up uh the the body that's in the trench coat of the corpo that you guys took and and they look inside and you hear them gasp and and one of them says fuck elena oh no and dr um, creel just says just just get inside we'll talk about this later on the way to the gold site i'm gonna check the uh the agent from that corpo that we killed. Okay. And I'm gonna see if there's any new messages uh, going through that. Also, I guess um, after, like right after that, I'll have uh, Adder check it, see if he can disable any tracking or anything that could be on it. Yeah, let me get a uh, electronic security or interface check from Adder, whichever one you want to do. Nice. Okay, with a 19, you're able to figure out exactly what's going on with this phone. You go into the settings. The tracker had been turned off, so it looks like this corpo didn't want to be tracked by his corporation. And there are no new messages. In fact, you're looking and the service on this phone is cut off. Mm. There's no longer service going to this phone. Yeah, they gotcha. definitely killed this connection. Well, maybe uh, maybe Adder can sort of trace back through it somehow. I don't know how all that shit works. At least but, get the uh, local files on the device. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can do that easily. Yeah, you can do that easily. There's a bunch of credentials for biotechnic uh, safe houses throughout the Austin. And it looks like uh, you can find his address where he lives, the recent people that he's text messaged and stuff like that. And it all just kind of looks not innocent, but nothing that important. Either that or it's really cryptic. All right, me and Barry are standing relatively close to each other, right? Yeah. All right, so as as this is all happening at the same time, I'm going to tell Elena, at all times, my cyber deck eyes and ears are on. Just be aware. Can you see Barry's device? Can you rip anything off of the device and bring it locally onto the cyber deck? You mean uh, Hub's device? Or Hub's device, sorry. Well, yeah. Not, not my device, but the device that that I took the off of that device. Yeah, 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 yeah. The one that, that Hub has. has. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, she, says, she says, if you can connect that agent to your cyber deck, I can go through it bit by bit, piece by piece. I just pulled out my hand to Hub. Yeah, I damned him the thing. And for a second, I thought you were going to, like, can you can you steal Barry's identity? That's rude as hell. <laughs> That's rude as fuck. I, right. I, I was confused. real bad about breaking your cyber deck. <laughs> That's what I was Don't thinking. That. I was like, That's rude deck. as hell and also not very smart. <laughs> not very smart. No, so I'll rip, I'll, I'll jack into the agent and have her grab all the information that I can and then burn the device and, and toss it. Okay, she she finds out <laughs> quickly. I mean, in an instant. As soon as uh, she gets into that device, she says, Room 108 at the Driscoll has a male occupant of interest. And Room 205 has two males and one female occupant of interest. And it says Helix. Or, sorry, not that one. Uh, room 207 says Helix. So, did you guys get that? 10... 
105 or uh, sorry uh 10 god damn it where did i put it oh one room 107 107 room 205 205 and 207 207 and then it says uh it then there was also information about them trying to occupy room 206 but not knowing whether they can get it or not Unconfirmed. Okay. okay. Yep. And then she also says Biotechnica system on the second floor. Roger that. So that's going to give you an extra plus one. So you already had a plus one. She's going to give you an extra plus one because she has the blueprints to their system. Now I'm whether this... I'm guessing there's another demon in there. Yeah. So, do you guys make your way into the jackalope? Yeah, like I said, Jack kicks the door open. All right, comes in, like his flash answer. He's like, "What's up?" Yeah, if we need we need what the the boys like to call in the olden days a long rest to heal up. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys walk into this bar, and you're immediately greeted by a giant plastic jackrabbit with giant deer antlers growing out of its head. It's a plastic statue that has a le leather saddle on its back that is worn from years of drunk patrons riding on it. The Austin atrocity have left their gang insignias tagged all over the bar and the statue is no different. There's two large A's that are expertly tagged on the side of the statue just in case passerbys didn't know this was an atrocity stronghold. You guys can hear some 2020 synth rock playing out of the various speakers around the bar and the bar seems to have kept the same 2020 aesthetic it had 25 years ago nice behind the bar is a heavily mustached man with one bionic eye a widow's peak and long gray hair helping him is a neon green mo mohawked tall scrawny youngster they're both moving with expert ease as they're preparing drinks at the bar and what you can't see is Martha, the chef, but you can hear her. Her deep voice cuts through the music and the bar chatter as she bellows, Check ready! And she rings a bell, ding ding, as if it's necessary. And inside you see Sharpie, Dog, and some other people that you haven't met yet. The Atrocity are just hanging out there drinking with the opening the containers that they got from the warehouse. And Sharpie looks up and says, Our guests of honor are here. Celebration of spoils, yes. And she looks up and uh, she says, uh, Greg, everything's on our tab. And the mustached man looks at her and says, Your tab's pretty high already. <laughs> and she I'm says, Greg. Greg Things are different now. I mean, come on. Look at oh. what we got here. Oh yeah. How many how many credits did we get while we were in that uh, that warehouse? I know we searched the uh, searched the bodies and searched around the warehouse for extra credits before we left. Any, any we had her tell us any cred stashes the warehouse had. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay, we could do that. Give me a second here. Let's roll yeah. for it. Yeah, pull those right. dice out. Yeah. Okay. The money is mine. I want the money. Alright, so each of you found about 600... Uh, sorry, not 600. Uh, four, five, 450 eddies worth is split between you guys. Alright, so what, we each get... Uh... You each get four, 450. Okay, sweet. Okay. Now looking at this bar, it's an oblong loop with a bar on both sides. And one section is devoted to the atrocity and it's closest to the kitchen. And that's where you guys are. The other side of the bar is open to the public. But, you know, locals know this is an atrocity establishment. There is one old broken auto turret hanging from the corner of the room. Where you guys are at. And you can see on the menu, this is what's on the menu here. 
There's food. There's drink. And, uh, yeah, those are the prices by Eddie's. Four Eddie's for water? What the fuck? Yep. Or you could drink Austin Ale for the <clears> same <throat> price. Well, I immediately noticed the broke-ass turret up in the corner and kind of studying a little bit while these guys are looking at the menu, getting settled. So... so I want to ask, ask Sharpie, uh, do you need somebody to fix that? Hell yeah, we need somebody to fix that. And the mustached man behind the bar says, Hell yeah, we need somebody to fix that. If you could fix that, then her tab is square and everything's on me today. I'll be right back, boys. Give me about ten minutes. Hey, man, we're not paying. Uh, ten, ten minutes? It's going to take you that long? Come on, bro. You're better than that. <laughs> I read that, that last thing on the bottom of the menu as prolapse brew. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want any of that. <laughs> I don't know why it's so expensive. I don't want any. Well, you didn't see what it was prolapsed out of, all right? Uh, it just ruined my night now. I'm going to be thinking of prolapsed anuses all night. Oh, Jesus God. Christ. Prolapse brew. Oh, my God. It's uh, <laughs> for our listeners and watchers. It says pre-collapse brew. Okay, and it's a hundred eddies a can. Parental advisory: This podcast is not recommended for anybody under the age of twenty-one. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so not being what? edited. <laughs> I like to. Th I like to think Sam Ectoplasm is a wholesome Christian role model. Okay. Yeah, I've always <laughs> felt that way too. <laughs> while he's taking another snort of that coke. <laughs> so hey, while uh, you while you're saying that, when Sam goes to sit down, he goes. Has anybody got any coke, man? Yeah, we need to fix you up too. Or right? some fucking meat, potatoes, and vegetables. All right. Like, I'm getting real meat and pre-collapsed brew. <laughs> I ain't paying for shit. Uh, before, <laughs> when you order that, the uh, Greg looks up and uh, he looks at Black Adder and Black Adder. Let me get a tech, uh, uh some kind basic of tech? basic tech for the further repairs. And I'm going to give you, oh, a plus, I was going to give you a plus three anyway. So even though you rolled 15. a one, you got a 15 mm -hmm. and that is a pass. So you somehow are connecting the right connections together. And he sees that the turret is jolting to life, but Wait, it still well, needs some repair. In the middle, in the middle, I'm like, listen, I, I need something first. And I walk so like over to Sam. As Sam sits down, I walk over to Sam. I need a big ass hit right now. And this will be golden. There is one big ass hit left on his small baggie. I'm gonna fucking rip it. Here comes the resist torture and drugs. <laughs> All right, you're uh, able to pass. You have plus one to your reflexes for the next four hours, and that's exactly what you need as you're connecting like a madman, green to green, red to blue to blue to orange, and you're just going wires. You're splicing them. You're soldering them. And Elena's actually giving you instructions as well, as you're doing that. Uh, only that uh, instructions that only you can hear. Time out. My depiction in my brain went a little bit different than that. If you look at Discord, that's that's kind of <laughs> <laughs> what I'm thinking about. Right now. Okay, <laughs> I like that. So, so basically, as you guys are resting here, um. The atrocity is going to help you guys out. They're going to give you their own homemade flak jackets. And they, they're patchworked. I mean, they even have AA tagged on them. But as long as it's under your shirt and under your jacket, I mean, no one can see the insignias or anything like that. You can hide the insignias. You can even rip off the patches if you want. Although it is a little bit disrespectful to do that. What's the body on those? So that's going to be oh. the same as you guys had before. The exact same. Okay. We're, we're unablated. Yeah, unablated about, uh, armor. Type of healing. So as far as healing goes, the only person that can heal is Adder and Hub. Their body stat plus a d6. What? Why can't I get healed? Because it's the same day and you had already healed in the past. I didn't get shot because I didn't jump down in the middle of the firefight. So basically, I'm going to let Barry and Sam just heal a D6 only. Because this is just like your rest time. 
of healing. So lounge drinks, drinks and food and lounge. So two extra HP for Sam. Full armor. And then Barry, you get five. That's a good roll. Five and full armor. Hub, you were largely unfazed. I'm just eating. I'm hungry. And Black Adder, you can actually heal your body stat plus a D6. You do have a little bit of a headache too. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> so D6 plus body? Yeah. All right, nine, respectable. And now you guys have full armor. You guys are basically like changing your armor. You're hanging out. You're eating food. You're you're relaxing. And Blackadder, you got that turret working. It's moving around. It's targeting. You got the targeting lock working. The kid that's helping Greg, he uh, you pretty much show him how it works, and and he's lining it up with his agent and everything. And uh, Greg looks at you and he says, I'm a man of my word and anything on this menu is free for you all. And the atrocity go, yeah. And he goes, no, no, not you stupid scum. <laughs> 20 years that's been sitting there broken. Not one of you could do shit about it. And he says, you don't deserve shit. So I guess in that case, I'll... Uh swap out the the meat in my meat potatoes and veggies for some real meat <laughs> but I'll still just have some, I'll still some have uh, me some water he brings you some water he brings you real meat and it is actually cow meat real cow meat that oh, is shit. that's been uh, frozen but hey it's real meat yeah and it tastes pretty good it's better than kibble it's better than synthetic meat and uh, it's made old school way with herbs and spices and, and all kinds of goodies. And you guys are just enjoying your meal there while Sharpie asks you, So, are you all joining the atrocity? Because we got room for any of you gattos. Well, Sam looks around and, you know, Sam's like grabbing armor and stuff, like looking for a light armor jack. He's... Well, he's got an armor jack, so what I'm pr pr uh, imagining is he's pulling out plates and putting new plates in and stuff like that. Yep. And then when he does that, he goes... Because I'm, I'm looking around, he's looking around at all the Austin Atrocity people, and they've all got the symbol somewhere on their body and stuff like that, right? Yeah, and actually looking at it, you can tell that it's been burned on to them. Nope. Branded. They've nice. been branded. So, Sam's like looking around and stuff like that. He's looking at everybody because they've all got it branded in like different spots and stuff, right? Yep. Sam just goes right here. And Sharpie kind of looks at you confused. She goes, what do you mean, man? Brand that shit right here. And she, she stands up. She looks at you and points and says, you're the fucking man, Sam Ectoplasm. Boys, get the brand. <laughs> I'm just sits there quietly eating his potatoes and shit like I'm not fucking. And uh, you know. some big dude comes uh, up from behind. He was sitting at one of the tables. He's right there with you, Hub. <laughs> he takes a a, a pint of Austin ale and in less than a second he just gulps it all down. Puts his cup down and out of his jacket pocket he pulls out a brand. It's a Sam goes. Sam go ask someone to give him a bump real quick before they start. You don't got no bumps left. No, someone else. Give me something. Someone in the atrocity. Give me something. Give him some coke, goddammit. And he says, uh, Sam, is that your name? Yes. Flex. Yes, it is. My name is Flex. Nice to meet you. I heard good things. And he pulls out the brand in one of his cyber hands and... And he says, this is gonna sting just a little bit, alright? And in his other hand, he has a blowtorch. And he just go and he starts torching this thing until it's red hot and it's burning in his cyber hand. And he said, uh, where'd you want it again? Ah, alright. Uh, you want something to bite down on? Alright, you put something. 
You're muted. He uh, grabs something. He grabs like a something on the table. Kind of pulls his mask away. All right, you grab uh, you grab like the <laughs> napkin dispenser, like a part a, a a grip of napkins out of the napkin dispenser, and you just fold them and fold them until they're really hard. Mm -hmm. You put it in your mouth, and let me get a resist torture drugs from you. Watch me roll a one on this shit. Yeah, you better not. <laughs> All Don't right. Like a bitch. <laughs> Everybody in the place smells burnt flesh. And you take it like a goddamn champ as your flesh is just burning and you're branded with two large A's on your neck. And it's black and, and, and you're holding in the pain and then these guys just start pouring alcohol on the wound. And, you know, uh, you hey, take that like a champ and Sharpie says, you know, so you don't get infected. <laughs> and just hey, like hi. that. You are branded with the Austin Atrocity logo right on your neck. I'm just like quietly sets down as sets down as fork. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Barry Slow leans over man. to Hub and he's like, "Hey Hub, I kind of want to go thump it." <laughs> just what? lean over and just give you two eddies if you do. <laughs> 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 The uh, once you put down your fork and your half-eaten food, the guy that gave uh, Sam ectoplasm a, some coke, he comes up to you and he says, uh, "You gonna eat that?" Yeah. I. You said you were done, man. I mean. No, I'm, no, I, I didn't. Uh, it, that was called sarcasm. <laughs> and then Sharpie looks at him and says, uh, "Sponge, leave him alone, you fucking idiot." Good <laughs> I, 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 I break in and say, whoa, 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 hold it. Sponge, did you say your name was? Sponge, come, like a sponge. Come sit next to Adder, Sponge. sponge. Like me, you sponge. and me need to have a talk. And, I, <laughs> and I, go, I go over to Gary and say, Gary, get this man to play to whatever he wants right now. The name's Greg, but you fixed the turret, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Thanks, Gary. <laughs> whatever he wants. Real meat's on the menu. Get some real meat for him. And uh, I'm gonna you... look over. I'm gonna look over at Sponge now. Uh, after he does that, and I'm sure Sponge is looking all like, "Oh, I... that's your cue to give him some coke." <laughs> and he pulls out. He like opens his jacket, and there's like ten different baggies coming out of pockets. And he pulls one of the baggies out and untwirls it, and there's a white powder in there. And he says, "Hey, man, if you want some of this, you can go ahead." As he as he pull as he pulls it out on his hand, I'm just gonna jam my nose into his hand and just. And he's just gonna be oh shit, god damn it, this guy's nuts. And then I'm gonna politely take the bag. Steal it <laughs> politely nice take the bag. Let me get a resist <laughs> torture <laughs> drugs from you again, Adder. All right, you take it like a champ once again. Synth coke is uh, might as well be breakfast cereal. Mm hmm. I, was like, you and and I, I know I've be mentioned good friends, before, Sponge. but once again, Hub is questioning his choice of companions. <laughs> <laughs> well, since Barry isn't currently in the middle of bashing people to death that he thinks deserves it, he's actually questioning his and Hub's choice of companions as well. <laughs> Just like, I was enjoying a nice meal with some crazy people and no. then this motherfucker gets branded with a gang tattoo at the table on his <laughs> neck on his neck it is a little rude of all places and so I, can i visibly see the distraught like confusion in barry and hub while they're sitting at the table it's it's more disappointment Barry is kind of lean, regardless of what like it is. I am right now with his finger pinching the bridge of his nose. <laughs> yeah. All right. Like, so if that's the if that's the demeanor, I'm trying to get the gentle demeanor of the table now. Yeah. As I see that and notice that, I'm going to turn and lean in real close to both of you guys and say, "The night is very young, boys. I hope you're <laughs> hungry." Don't, don't say that. <laughs> 
Now, you guys, uh, looking at your information, you know you're about a three-minute drive from the Driscoll. It's actually down the street. You don't even have to drive, really, but it's faster to drive, obviously. And what you do know is that there... It, let me get a local uh, expert from there. With Elena's help, we'll get a plus two. All right, so that plus two. Yeah. All right, 20. that's enough. So oh, Black 20. Adder, Black Adder, looking up uh, just like basically the city net and from information that Elena can give you, she says the hotel is the oldest hotel in Austin with a rich history. After the collapse, the hotel's business has failed and it was sold to a bank. And let me see here. A few years later, the bank was sold to the Austin City Council. So they own the hotel now. And to generate revenue for the city, they opened it. But the true nature of it is, it's a mystery. And she just keeps looking through it. She kind of gets a little bit silent. And she says, looking through the database, I find that there are all kinds of rumors that revolve around what's going on in the hotel. Including it's a safe haven for corpse to, to hide out. A place where fixers can meet corpse. Human sacrifice, arm dealing, bribery. I mean, there's so many outlandish things here. And What's the time frame that we got to move to get there, and like, like our general, like, all right. So it's not a rest, quote unquote, but we are resting, rejuvenating. How? Yeah. So Sam's basically, basically, you guys are stable. You guys are as healed up as you can be. You ate. You went to the bathroom. You did everything you need to at at the jackalope. And you're as good as it gets to go to this place. You have about five more hours until the original Galt site invasion was supposed to happen. Alright. Let's head over there and help them uh, fortify it up, I guess. Hmm. Well, no, we we need to bust into this other place. Yeah, we want to go grab oh, Helix. Right. You're right. Yep. Okay, why don't we, before we end... Why don't we just have you guys go to the Driscoll real quick and give me you, one You sec. said that's actually local too, right? Yeah, it's three minutes away. So you guys want to head there right now? Three yeah, minutes? Sure. Yeah, we got five hours. Mm. Yeah, we ate up. We rested. Somebody got burned. Somebody got high. Are you taking any atrocity with you? Any help from them or anything like that? No. <laughs> that's an emphatic <laughs> no. Oh, including, including Sam. He's staying here now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys head over there. And I just want to do this real quick. Make sure everything is working. So next time we can take nice. off from here. So basically, let me make sure. Uh, make sure your HP values are updated. And everything. Okay, yeah, perfect. That's what you guys can see. I can see from your perspective. Uh, this is the entrance here. All right. And to the left over here, you can see a couple of windows. But basically, this is the entrance to the hotel. And as you guys can move in... Uh, you guys can actually just go inside if you'd like. You just have to let me know that you want to go inside. Uh, yeah, I think we want to try and be uh, try and be a bit quiet about it. So yeah, I want to search for right? nodes. Okay, why don't I get an inter a pathfinder from you? Yep. Or sorry, a scanner. Okay. Mm. You're unable to locate a node nearby. You are seeing that there is one on the first floor of this hotel, but you don't know its exact location. Alright, um, so I'm that message. Fire escapes? No, no fire escapes. This is the first floor. You do see a second floor, but there's no like balconies or fire escapes or anything like that. Alright, front door it is. Okay. Now, as you guys move your... Uh, you guys shouldn't be able to move into areas I don't let you... But all you have to do is let me know that you're opening the front door, and is that what you do? Oh, that is cool. Yeah, that is awesome. I was just trying okay. to Okay, front door is open. I think Barry goes first, and then I'll go in right behind him. 
Yeah, can't go all the way in, John. Uh, you son can't. Of a bitch. Yeah, we can't actually move through that door yet. What the hell? You should be able to. Hold on, let me make sure. I did seen this some right. of the dynamic lighting roll a little bit by the windows and shit, but I can't get in that. There we go. Okay, now you can? Okay. Yep. <sighs> okay, so there you go. So you guys walk right into there. And <clears throat> inside is the hotel lobby with an air purifier and UV spotlight. Two men are standing in the lobby trying to... They're talking to the concierge through the uh, protective glass. And it looks like the concierge is taking a little longer for their liking. If I can get a streetwise check from you guys, this is going to be a minus three because uh, you don't know the area too well. But using Elena Covey's database, you might be able to uh, figure oh, it out. Expert. So I'm going to give you a, a minus one only. All right, that's a 10 on hub. Yeah, I don't have streetwise. I only have local expert. Oh, there we go. I think Sam got it. All right, yeah. Sam. As uh, is, it you... a minus, is it a minus one for everybody, or a minus one just for? No, minus one for everybody because uh, okay. Elena is going to be able to relay the information to Black Adder, and then he can tell you guys. Yeah. Okay. So basically, what you guys are seeing, uh, what you see there, um, Sam, is these guys are hot fists, and hot fists are a booster gang in Austin. They're a combat gang. And you know that they're hot fists because the, their knuckles have been painted red with tattooed <laughs> ink. And uh, these guys are four higher gangsters, right? And as you guys are walking in, there's like chairs that you can sit down on. The UV purifier goes off and the door closes behind you unless you leave it open. Hub is still outside. Uh, I, I'm meant to be inside, just okay. remember it all inside yet all right so you guys are inside and these guys are one of them's banging on the window and he says room 104 for fuck's sake can you hurry the hell up and uh the concierge behind the window she's smoking a cigarette let me give you guys a view of what she looks like in there i'll i'll text at her and i'll be like was 104 one of the rooms of interest no 104 was not one of the rooms of interest Okay. <clears throat> so. <laughs> Very. So they're like banging on the on the glass and just harassing this woman at this point as she's trying to work. Yep. And you said, where, where's the picture of what she looks like? So you guys would be able to see if you just peek oh. in the window. So you just okay, have, you just to... move your. Uh... Yeah. No, okay. I saw. I'm gonna. So Barry's gonna be like. Why don't you shut the fuck up and let her do her job? Why don't I get a uh, cool check from you or some kind of persuasion? I, yeah, he did. He rolled a 22 on a Oh, persuasion. 22. Okay, here we go. All right. And uh, he looks at you, Barry, and he's about he was about to say something, but then he kind of like looked at you, looked at Hub. Guy. <laughs> yeah, looked at Hub, looked at Adder, looked at Sam, and kind of looked at you guys, and you guys have like this serious look on your face. And he just says, all right, man, chill out. And he just, like, backs up a little bit. And uh, she slides. Fucking Sam has a fresh brand on his fucking neck. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, concierge slides over a credit card type device, obviously a key card for his room. And she says, thank you for your patience, sir. With a little bit of venom <laughs> behind. <laughs> and uh, these guys just walk off ahead of you guys and they kind of like disappear into the rest of the hotel and the concierge comes down here and she says uh how can i help you guys she says you can walk into my office if you'd like <laughs> <Who's that? laughs> so walking into this room there let me get a uh let me get an interface check from you black adder Yep, there's definitely a node in here, and you're in fact, that's what this is. You can see it. It's like an is, obvious node. Is that your is that your actual interface? Because shouldn't it be uh, your interface skill plus your 
stat that's tied to that? There's no stat tied to interface. In fight, yeah. Oh, is that his uh, roll skill or whatever? Yeah. Yep. Yep. So inside you see a concierge smoking a cigarette, protected by a completely chromed out woman holding a mono katana at the ready. She just has it uh, just like hanging right by, not hanging, but like in her hand, and it's pointed to the ground. Me. And uh, she looks up at you all and she says, uh, yeah, uh, what can I do for you, gentlemen? When Sam walks in and sees the fully chromed out chick with the katana, he just goes, ooh, hey, sexy. She never changes her expression and she doesn't, She wherever whoever she was looking at, she continues looking at. She just looks at you, never changes her Damn. expression, never says a single word. Damn, I'm always just breaking my own heart. <laughs> you know, I'm going to lean into her and say, we have information of suspect people. One in particular we're looking for. She uh, immediately, why don't I get a perception check from you guys? Roger that. Uh, you can tell that as soon as you said that to her, uh, Barry especially. Yeah, Barry, you, you could see that. She immediately was like, oh shit, like caught off guard. And and she keeps looking at their her protector and she says, uh, uh, yeah, whatever. I mean, look, do you need a room? We have a couple vacant rooms, room 106 and room 109 if you'd like either of them. We need three rooms specifically. Can I get... Can I get a smoke? <laughs> And uh, she I, says, she says, yeah, of course. And he's like, can I get a smoke to kind of chill things out? Her name tag says Val, by the way, the concierge. Hey, Val. And she she offers a smoke to you and her hand is shaking. And when she pulls her arm out to offer the cigarette to you, this assassin moves her attention to her. Uh, what seemingly is assassin bodyguard, I meant to say. She looks at Val, and she says nothing, but she's looking at her. Oh. Uh, what would the skill be? Is it like a, a human perception? Yep. Let's yeah, see if there's like any uh, any menace. Like, is the concierge basically being threatened by this lady? Yeah, so why don't you roll... Okay, perfect. With an 18, it looks like this isn't a bodyguard uh, and client relationship. It's leaning more towards the kind of like a jailer-prisoner kind of thing. That's the vibe you're getting. That this girl, Val, is working here, but this person that is all chromed out with a mono katana in, in her hand is really here to watch Val. Oh. So I take a deep drag off of the cigarette that that she handed me, right? How often do you get assholes like uh, those two pricks from out there? And uh, Val looks up uh, and she looks at you and her eyes just keep darting to the person that she's with. And she says, oh, just, you know, it's it's part of business. It's part of how it goes here. Uh, yeah, like I said, room 106 or room 109. Okay, I just rolled two bat hits to this uh, chromed out bitch. All right. As soon as Val starts answering him, Barry just immediately turns around. Okay. First one connects. Second one obviously connects. Roll your damage for the first one. Crit. What does a crit add to the uh, damage? In this? Injuries. Ah, uh, injury. That's right. Okay, roll. Uh, roll your crit again, or sorry, your damage <laughs> again. Ooh, you crushed your fingers. <laughs> All right. So your first swing, bang, bangs off the side of her head, and your second swing comes down on her, and she was gonna block with the mono katana, but she was too slow, and the middle part of your bat crushes her fingers and the top part of your bat hits her right in the head and she falls and slumps to the ground unconscious nice and Val stands up immediately drops her cigarette on the ground and goes holy shit oh my god 
Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, is she dead? Did you fucking kill her? Nah, she looks like she's breathing. Why did- why did you do that? Oh my god, you guys- you well, guys are so I, fucking dead. Because I want to talk to you, and obviously, you're not gonna talk to me while she's staring at you. Uh, I mean, is she alive? If she wakes up, I'm dead. She's gonna kill all of us. We're all dead. Oh my god. Oh my god, what do I do? They're gonna come and check on me tomorrow, and if she's not here, then... She's immediately doing math in her head of, like, what's gonna, the consequences of what's just happening right now. Uh, take out my, uh, take out my pistol and just, like, raise my eyebrows, like, eh? I just pointed at her, like, no, 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 no. is that what you're that, asking? That would be much too loud. No, 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 no noise, no gunshots, no gunshots, please. But I, yeah, but I, I say Barry can just... It's like, Barry, just take that shiny new mono katana that you have and then, you know, finish things up. So, how about we start with... I'm going to grab the mono katana, right? You do that? I'm definitely going to grab the mono katana. I like uh, to imagine since Barry is based off of... He's totally not based off of Casey Jones. <laughs> you know, he just grabs the katana and he looks at it and he puts it in that fucking bag that Casey Jones had on the back of his head, on his back, that had all of the fucking sports equipment that he used to beat people with. Like, if you don't have a mono-edged hockey stick, I'm gonna be very <laughs> upset with you, right? But, um... Then... I'm going to, uh... take my, my chain belt with the pad padlock, my own that I use for a belt, and I'm gonna tie, uh, I'm gonna tie the the bitch's arms behind her back and lock them and everything. Yeah, you can do that easily. There's nothing she can do about it. She's completely unconscious. And, and you know, uh, be, you know, I find something to gag her with, and then I'm going to look back at Val. Val, why don't you pick up your cigarette before it starts a fire? And then I'm going to sit down, take another drag off the cigarette she gave me. <laughs> and she says, oh, fuck, and she starts stamping the cigarette out. It already burnt the carpet underneath and she says oh who who are you guys are you, wait are you part of the organization uh i can't do a human perception to see like uh like if by organization she means like some she's you know, terrified of or something that she's part of or what sure all right so it sounds like whatever this organization is from the tone of her voice that it's the same organization that it has induced the same kind of fear that she has with this bodyguard of hers. So either they're connected or she's also afraid of this organization. So I guess I'll um, I'll say that uh, we're not a part of it, but um, this doesn't have to involve you at all if you uh, just... Tell us what we're looking to know and uh, get on your way. She and didn't need to tell us anything. Just let her go and have a smoke break and give me about 10 minutes. She, yeah, she says, I, I'm i at your mercy. No, no, you're looking at this all wrong. We, Nothing's going to happen to you. We mean We're not going to do anything to you. Something's yeah, already like happened to me. My whole life got twisted upside down when you just killed this fucking bitch here. She's not dead yet. <laughs> she could be, if that would make it easier for you. Well, if you're not with her, and you're not here to kill me, then yeah, I want her dead, and I want to get the fuck out of here. Okay, we can do that. But first... We have a few rooms that we would like you to tell us about. She points at the the computer in front of her and says, Everything's there. You don't have to be a smart-ass computer whiz to know how to use it. She she types into it. You got any passwords we need to know? She says, you're logged into my account. I'm going to lean well, over to Sam and, and say, Hey, Sam, you got any quaaludes you give her to calm her to fuck down? No, I think she just needs to go home, take the rest of the day off, maybe go on a vacation if she's so worried. 
Or she can go to the Jackalope and tell all the boys over there that Sam Ectoplasm sent him and she needs somewhere to hide. I'm getting the fuck out of Austin. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And I'm that never looking good. back again. That's, that's a, a good, good plan. Just fuck this town. I'm gonna give her that. I'm gonna give her a hundred creds. We appreciate your um discretion in these matters. She takes the cred stick immediately, stuffs it in her pocket, and just slowly starts getting in between you guys to try to get out of there. Do you guys no, just let her go? Free. As soon as yeah. you say that, she bolts out the door. And she yeah, just we would have just moved. We would just moved out of her way. She <laughs> bolts out of the door, and ladies and gentlemen, that's where we are going to leave off the session. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this. Uh, looks like the dynamic lighting is sort of working, so. Oh no, it's working perfectly, dude. Yeah, it's great. Right. We're gonna have some fun with this, and we will see you guys next time with the wise guys. Thank you very much. If there's anything you guys like to say before we leave. I love you all and you all make me very, very happy. Jenny. All right, guys. Have a good one. <laughs> we'll see you. Thank you so much. And bye-bye. Fucking Joe. You got anything you want to say? Kitty, kitty, kitty. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>